On today's episode, I will be breaking down Blackhawks general manager Kyle Davidson's end of the season presser, where he discussed adding Jeff Greenberg to the front office, the futures of Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves, the coaching search, and much, much more. I'll be breaking all of it down right here on Locked On Blackhawks. <laughs> Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Wednesday, May 4th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And if you're listening to the audio version of today's episode and you like what you're hearing, then please go and show some support first by following the podcast. It'll only take a quick couple of seconds, literally just a quick click of the button will help me out tremendously. Go and leave the show five stars if you like what you're hearing today as well. And if you're tuning in through Apple Podcasts or through Spotify, feel free to drop me a review as well. I always appreciate getting feedback from my tremendous listeners out there. And best of all, it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast, whether that be through Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. It's all 100% for free. And if you go and follow the show right now, then you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already watching the video version of today's episode, then you got to be sure to go and check out Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube because each and every, every episode from here on out, folks, is going to have a video version attached to it as well. So if you if you have not done so already, please, please, please go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. Go and smash the like button for me. And also be sure to turn on those push notifications so you can be notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right, good afternoon, everyone. And as always, thank you for joining me for another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop. For all things Chicago Blackhawks and for making the show your first listen here to start off your day. And to open things up here today, folks, I wanted to, uh, well, first, I'm going to be dedicating this entire episode here this afternoon to the end of the season presser that was held by Blackhawks general manager Kyle Davidson yesterday. And Kyle touched on, you know, many different topics. He ended up speaking for like 45 minutes or something like that. Uh, but on the show today, I'm going to be going over some of the most important topics that I thought he touched on with the media. And on the show yesterday, I already talked for a little bit about uh, the head coaching decision and how that's probably looking like it's going to be coming sometime in mid-July or sometime right around the NHL draft is basically what Davidson said. If you want to hear more about that, be sure to go check out yesterday's episode of Lockdown Blackhawks. I also touched on Davidson and the decision that he came to uh, of Alex Vlasic not being reassigned to the Rockford Ice Hogs for their postseason run, which, by the way, is going to kick off later this evening at 7 p.m. Central Time. So be sure to tune in and check out uh, some of the up and coming youngsters in the Blackhawks pipeline as they start off their best of three series against the Texas Stars at the BMO Harris Bank Center in Rockford later tonight. Uh, but what I wanted to open up the episode with today, folks, was just how much Davidson continues to emphasize on making sure the team goes about this rebuild correctly or in the right manner. And that was something, once again, yesterday we heard Davidson mention time and time again. And I really am starting to feel like that's the biggest takeaway that Blackhawks fans should have going forward throughout this rebuild is that, you know, while the team certainly is looking long-term and some of the players, you know, think that it could turn around faster than possible or faster than some people imagine, excuse me. Uh, it's not really about either of those two things. It's not about a specific date. In Davidson's mind, it's just simply about doing it right. And we heard him say, look, you know, we it's not that we don't want to be going about this in the fastest way possible and that we don't want to be winning. You know, it's not like we don't want that to happen. He just wants to make sure that, 
when they do get back to that competitive window and when it opens up once again, he wants to make sure it's not just a flash in the pan type of situation. He wants to make sure that they can stay there and be competitive for a long, long time. And with the team that we have right now, obviously uh, we're a long ways away and have a long ways to go in order to get back to that point. So uh, the whole timeline of this rebuild, there isn't exactly, like I said, a set date or uh, something that's exactly set in place. No, it's just more so they want to make sure they go about it in the right manner and they take all the right steps and don't rush anything along the way. And that's kind of the mentality from top to bottom in the organization, not in terms of just the on ice product that comes with being patient with the prospects down in Rockford for the first time in forever. Now that Stan Bowman's not trying to save his job and having 18, 19 year olds come up entirely too early. Uh, but we're also seeing the Blackhawks being patient with the coaching search. And I really do think if, if they don't absolutely love a candidate that they interview this summer, they could just go back to Derek King and give him, you know, a one year extension and then next year go about the same process, see if there's any more candidates, see if there's someone they like more. They're in that position to be patient. Why? Because all that matters is going about this in the correct manner and uh, making sure they make those correct decisions. And this is also, I think, why Kyle Davidson brought on Jeff Greenberg. Uh, and this is what he spoke about yesterday when he was asked about Greenberg, you know, obviously being a baseball executive his whole career and now coming in into the NHL and people are obviously going to be skeptical of how he's going to make an impact when he doesn't have any hockey experience. Um, but Kyle talked about more so Greenberg's going to be involved in um, the decision-making processes and tracking information and using all the data that they compile in order to help make those correct decisions and to help speed up those processes. That's something that Greenberg did for years with the Chicago Cubs and was a part of bringing that organization back all the way from the bottom up to the top and help them win a World Series in 2016. Uh, so that's really where Greenberg is going to make a difference and Kyle said that was kind of an area that he was lacking in and would like to become more knowledgeable about so Greenberg's a perfect guy who's been there done that to bring on and help this team kind of instill those processes and data tracking in the game of hockey and Davidson you know to be fair he was asked this about how you know baseball is a much easier game to kind of quantify and to put into data and to make it all relevant whereas hockey especially in terms of defensemen it's kind of hard to accurately gauge who's a good defenseman, who's been performing well. You know, it's not all just about points. So it's, it's a tough thing to gauge. And while Kyle did admit that, you know, it, it's probably going to be difficult to track data as efficiently in hockey as it is in baseball. He did say that even if Greenberg, you know, helps make, uh, make those, that, that data a little bit more, if, if they can transition that into something that they can see on the ice. And even if it just helps in a couple of, of areas, you know, those small things, those small differences, they, they can make a, a huge impact and can really have a, a huge role in what's coming in the future. That can make a huge difference as to what the Blackhawks are going to look like and how they have success on the ice. Even if it's just a couple of different decisions, Davidson wants to have that. So um, it was just, Interesting to hear him, you know, harp on patience once again and how they're so determined to make those correct decisions and they're not focused on whether that has to come, you know, right now. It's just whenever whenever the time comes, they want to go about things the right way and they want to give themselves options and to be taking in as many opinions and such as possible. And that's one thing about Davidson. He always wants to have that input from everybody, whether you're Top of, you know, if you're in the front office with him, like if you're Jamie Faulkner or if, if you're Norm McIver or now Jeff Greenberg, or if you're someone lower in the organization, he wants to have all that input, have those opinions and have all the data possible. So uh, that really kind of, I think, made more sense to hear him talk about it and the addition of Jeff Greenberg to the front office. Um, so again, like I said, just having that patient approach and wanting to go th go about things in the correct manner. I really believe that's the biggest thing to know about the Blackhawks new general manager is that he's not going to make any rash decisions and he's always looking at the bigger picture for this franchise. All right, there were some of the overall thoughts that I had on Kyle Davidson's presser. Coming up in just a moment, I will get into what Davidson had to say on the futures of Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. 
But first, I need to talk to you all about Athletic Greens and their new AG1 product. With just one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and more to help you start your day. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and your aging. An interesting story about Athletic Greens. The company was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine in order to recover. And that used to cost them $100 per day. Athletic Greens was made to know based on the experience of how difficult it was to create an optimal nutritional routine on your own that can be affordable. The old method from the creator cost just $100 cost $100 per day and now AG1 costs you less than $3 per day. That's such a cheap way to invest in your health and in your body. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free 1-year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and 5 free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go visit athleticgreens.com/nhlnetwork right now. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, getting into segment two today. Let's talk about what Davidson had to say in his end of the season presser regarding the futures of Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. I thought it was funny. Uh, kind of right out of the gate, Ben Pope from the Chicago Sun-Times, uh, former guest here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast and likely to be uh, a future guest here in the next couple of weeks. Definitely be sure to keep an eye out for that. Uh, but Ben straight up asked Kyle if he wants Taves and Kane to have futures here in Chicago, if they are willing to be a part of this rebuild. And Davidson, with a smile on his face, he kind of looked down laughing at the question as well. Uh, said that there always will be a place for those two with the Chicago Blackhawks if they are wanting to have a role in this process. And it sounded like Davidson, um, he also talked about his end of the season convos with both of those players. And it sounded like it was the first time they had a real drawn out and lengthy conversation of what's to come and what's to be expected. Uh, But he also made it sound like, you know, it was a very open and honest chat with both guys um, and kind of how he talked to them about the specific roles he envisions them having down the road. And for Kaner, I think that's a a much easier conversation to have than it is for Taves. Obviously, Kaner, if he wants to remain here in Chicago, he sure looks like he could be a top line player player for quite a while longer. Uh, And his leadership, obviously, is something that the younger guys can lean on throughout these coming years as well. For Taves, obviously, the leadership stuff is all the same. He's known to be one of the best leaders in not only the NHL, but in all of professional sports till, you know, some of the things he said this year. Um, But it has to be at a full-on commitment from him, right? And like I said, there were plenty of comments that he made throughout the season that were interesting, to say the least. Uh, regarding the direction of the franchise. And that's why this convo, you know, between Taze and Davidson is far more interesting than the one that that it is with Canes um, because there are just tough questions that need to be asked and to see what Taves wants. Like, does he want to be, does he want to remain the captain and be the true top leader of the Chicago Blackhawks throughout the rebuild or does he not? Does he want to go elsewhere? Like it's kind of as simple as that to me in terms of that aspect Uh, But there's also the discussion on what kind of role he's going to have potentially as well, because, you know, during the end of the season, we certainly saw him be far more productive than he was in the first half and looked like he started to, you know, find his rhythm and get things going there a bit consistently. But there are still questions as to what kind of player he's going to be on the offensive side of things in the future as well. Uh, We know he's going to be good at the faceoff dot, even after missing an entire season last year, he came back and was one of the top in the NHL in that department. He's still very reliable on the defensive side of things, but offensively, I mean, yeah, the second half was good, but it's still probably not the year. I mean, it's tough when he's not a hundred percent, but overall it was just a frustrating year for Taves offensively. He was basically invisible on the power play. So, you know, would he be willing to take a lesser role offensively moving forward I think that has to be part of the conversation with Davidson as well. So 
Um, it, it remains to be seen what's going to happen with either player in the future. All we know is that they've now had their end of the season convos with Kyle. According to Davidson, they were very open and healthy chats about uh, basically everything considering that regarding them and the organization. And I think regardless of what's going to happen with these two, I, I do think it's really important, you know, for, for everything to be openly communicated from, from both sides there. You know, you don't want any confusion about the direction or the franchise. There's obviously been that um, for the last five or six years while the Hawks have been in limbo, you know, you don't want any, I don't want to say backstabbing, but you don't want any bad blood stemming from those conversations uh, and the best way to ensure that na- never happens is to be regular have regularly having these types of conversations, uh, especially with two of the biggest icons in franchise history. They deserve that opportunity to speak their minds, um, not only about uh, their futures in particular, but also to provide some input on you know what they are thinking about this entire process. Like I said, with Kyle Davidson, he's someone who wants input from all aspects. I've heard that from many people around the Blackhawks. He likes gathering as many opinions as possible, having all the data out there and taking it for what it is and then coming to a decision. So um, regardless of what happens, I'm just glad to hear that, you know, Davidson feels those chats have gone well based on what he said yesterday in this presser and uh, that it's going to continue to be an open and honest type of relationship with both of those players moving forward in this process. All right, there are some thoughts on what Davidson had to say regarding the futures of Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. Coming up in just a minute, I will get into some other possible additions that we could see in the Blackhawks front office moving forward. But first, I need to talk to you all about Bet Online. It's that time of the year again, folks, as baseball season is finally upon us, and Bet Online has way more odds and info from game scores, totals, player performance props to where the next fired manager is going to land or who the first fired manager is going to be this year. Either way, whatever you want to bet on, bet online remains your number one spot for all sports betting here in 2022. It's not just baseball from the NBA and NHL playoffs to esports, boxing and UFC. There are some incredible fights coming up this weekend. You definitely want to be throwing some money on that from whatever it is to, to your favorite Vegas casino games, bet online is the number one spot for all sports betting here in 2022. Do not wait to take advantage of some of the amazing offers that they have available for this season. It's both the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and your Vegas casino games. Bet online, where the game begins. Welcome back to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Moving on into segment three now today, I also wanted to be sure to touch on a couple of other pieces to the front office that could be coming sometime here in the fu- in the future. First, Brian Campbell. Uh, Kyle Davidson did say to expect Soupy to remain a big part of things going forward and that he remains in the fold. There still isn't an official title for Campbell at this point, um, but he does remain a close advisor to Davidson as he was when Kyle was still just the interim GM. Uh, and Davidson believes that Campbell has a very bright future in hockey operations and and he absolutely will have some type of role with the team this season. And I thought it was also interesting to hear Davidson talk about how Campbell has a a very curious mind and he's always wanting to, you know, learn more about uh, player development or scouting or data tracking, all that good stuff. Just another person that kind of like Davidson is always trying to find different ways to get the job done and to come to those decisions. So just just like a, another person who is thinking openly and has also a lot of experience on the ice and has been part of the Blackhawks organization for the past couple of years now. So I uh, expect Brian Campbell to have an official title at some point, maybe in the next couple of months. I probably expect at least though sometime before next season kicks off in the fall and then Davidson was also asked by former host of Lockdown Blackhawks Jay Zawoski about the future of Marion Hossa with the organization because if you remember just just a few months ago um, Hossa was someone the Blackhawks wanted to have input from regarding the next GM of the club and it, it just seems likely with Hossa also uh being announced to have his jersey retired at the UC next season 
He was involved in the GM hiring process. It just seems likely that he's going to be involved in some way, shape, or form going forward, which I know a ton of Blackhawks fans out there are going to be 100% on board with. Uh, Kyle didn't say uh, exactly, didn't have a direct answer about this. He he said he didn't have an update at the moment, Um, but it sure sounds like there could be a relationship brewing in the works And with not only the career that Hosa had, obviously that all speaks for itself. Three-time Stanley Cup champion, went to the finals, what was it, five times, I believe. Had an outstanding career, first ballot Hall of Famer. Like I said, that speaks for itself. But also, he's someone who always seemed like a very intelligent two-way player, someone who thought the game out very well, always seemed like a smart and also just a very respectable guy. You know, no one has a bad thing to say about Marion Hosa. He was respected. Uh, by everyone along the way throughout his career. So I think it's going to be a perfect fit for Hosa probably to have some sort of advisory role or something uh, sometime down the road. But those are a couple of former Blackhawks who could be having larger roles off of the ice now, uh, possibly being announced as well sometime throughout the offseason. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Wednesday, May 4th episode of Locked On Blackhawks. May the 4th be with you. Thank you all again for tuning into the show and be sure to go to uh, go follow Lockdown Blackhawks. Go subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts and also be sure to go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube and you'll be able to get the get the episode as soon as it comes out each day. And after the show, be sure to go check out Lockdown NHL as well for info on every team ahead of the Stanley Cup playoffs. We just got underway in the past couple of days. Be sure to get all the updates on every team involved from Lockdown NHL. It's free and available on every podcast app, so be sure to check out Lockdown NHL wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can check me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and follow my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talkin' Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And for any questions regarding anything related to the show or to the Blackhawks, feel free to email LockdownBlackhawks at gmail.com. You can also hit me up on either of my Twitter accounts, or you can call 708-653-0572 to leave a voicemail. So until tomorrow's episode, thanks again for checking out the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.